Hello, hello! This week we're going to delve deeper into the topic of matchmaking ratings and its impact on fairness within Dead by Daylight. We're going to discuss the concept of symmetry and asymmetry, fairness itself, the emerging meta playstyles, and try to establish if MMR fits well into the realm of Dead by Daylight's design. Within DBD, MMR is a set of hidden numbers assigned to each player's overall skill as survivor and their ability with individual killers. Its purpose is to ensure players of similar skill levels are matched up together. We have discussed MMR in past videos and how it may have shifted the mindset of the player base in a more competitive direction. And since its introduction, there has been plenty of discussion and feedback from players regarding it, prompting a recent testing period and subsequent tweaks to the system by behaviour. But before we can look at how it has impacted fairness, we should first look at balance in game design itself. Symmetry greatly simplifies a problem, making it easier to understand and analyse. Possibly the most famous and oldest example of symmetry in games is chess. Both sides have the same options to move pieces within an equal amount of board space. But even chess has asymmetrical issues, namely, who goes first. Studies and experts have found that there is a small advantage to playing white and taking the first move, resulting in a greater win rate for those players. So even chess suffers some minor balance issues. Though with modern gaming, turn-based issues like this can be reduced. For example, we can now play in real time. For example, Overwatch. Overwatch features two equal-sized teams of six in a first-person shooter environment. All players have access to change characters and counter each other throughout the match. This means everyone has equal opportunity to use the same abilities and weapon types as their opposition. The game is highly symmetrical in this regard. If we look at the level design as well, Capture the Point maps feature some of the finest examples of symmetrical level design, where both sides have equal distance and routes to an objective. In these match types, no one side has an advantage over the other within the level's layout. Now if we compare these maps to the escort map type, where one team is defending whilst the other pushes a payload forward, there is a lack of symmetry. To counter this, in ranked, both teams must either push the payload further than the other, or in a quicker time to win. Both teams will have a turn at pushing the payload and defending, ensuring no one side has an advantage over the other. Overwatch is also very static in some elements of its game design. For example, every time you play on a specific map, it will be the same. Health, player and objectives always spawn in the same locations. So players in theory start with the same information. Fairness is at the forefront of Overwatch's design and both sides have equal opportunity allowing for a competitive match. With these static elements, you could question uncertainty. This is a phrase we've discussed a lot in past videos. This is what makes a game so enjoyable to play and watch. The unpredictable chaos of it all. In Overwatch, this element actually comes from the players themselves, rather than the game's environment. The player's skill and playstyles are the focus. But not all games are made equal. Asymmetric games rely on players taking on different gameplay roles, often with associated different views of the game world and different input modalities. Dead by Daylight has two different sides, the survivors and the killers. Survivors main objective is to repair generators, evade the killer and escape. For them, the game is set in a third person view, giving them better vision of the environment. Their perks specifically aim to help them with evasion and survival. Killers seek to defend generators, prevent escape, and ultimately sacrifice those survivors to the entity. Their perspective is set to first person, and they have a more limited vision in comparison to their opponents. Their perks aim to slow generator progress and help them seek out and catch survivors. On top of the mechanical differences, the killer plays alone, whereas the survivors have a team of four to work together against the killer. So Dead by Daylight is as asymmetrical as it gets. In terms of level design, the closest example of a symmetrical map in Dead by Daylight is probably Azeroth's resting place. The main building and killer shack appear on opposite sides of the map, and for the most part, three gens on each side, with one roughly in the middle. The trouble is, DBD has RNG and random generation, leading to these generator placements still sometimes being very difficult to defend or complete. And the tile layout on this map specifically can be very cruel for killers to catch up to a survivor, with strong loops interconnecting with one another. So quite often, the matchups have advantages and disadvantages for both sides, in terms of the mechanics and map layouts. Even when the map seems symmetrical, the game generates asymmetry within it. But both sides tend to be affected, so can this be fair?
fairness or equality is an essential component of games. The paper this quote is from goes on to discuss how games should have equal winning ratio, regardless of who goes first in a turn-based game, and that a truly fair game would result in a draw. So in DBD, this would be a two-kill game where two survivors escape. The trouble is the game's design win states oppose this ideal. The way MMR is calculated for a survivor and killer is essentially broken down into four 1v1s. For each sacrifice the killer attains, some MMR is awarded. They win against that survivor, and loses if said survivor manages to escape. Vice versa, a survivor wins if they survive the match, and loses if they are sacrificed. So a 2k still means two survivors lost and two won, thus meaning the killer has both won and lost the match, which may well fuel frustration among killer players in particular. The biggest controversy of asymmetric game is whether it can achieve the fairness of the opposing sides under the initial unbalanced setting conditions. Essentially, it's very difficult to balance an asymmetrical game and ensure some level of fairness. The uncertain and often random design in DBD has created a fun, unpredictable and chaotic environment making for exciting gameplay and engaging viewing, but not necessarily a fair one. A survivor can loot the killer for the entire match, go down after the fifth generator is completed and then be face camped to death, and they have lost the match. A killer can play fairly and hook every survivor twice, but all of them make their way out of the exit door, resulting in a total defeat. This doesn't feel fair. So to summarise so far, we have asymmetrical mechanics where both sides have access to different tools for their opposing goals, level design with random generation giving advantages and disadvantages to both sides with minimal predictability, and win conditions which don't reward high skill but simply reduce the match to one simplistic element, survival and killing. But the purpose of MMR is to create fairer matchups with players of similar skill sets, which in theory should mean every player has a fair chance. So what has the outcome of MMR been? In the past we have discussed StarCraft 2's design. This is a game which was designed to be a competitive eSport. Maps are designed symmetrically to establish fairness, less unit choice is given to players than its competitors, encouraging player decisions to be fueled with purpose. It is this idea of purpose which makes competitive eSport style games so compelling. A game's meta can be briefly summed up as an optimised strategy based on the game and the game's surrounding structures. Essentially, it is a calculatable advantage to certain playstyles, People make decisions with a foreseeable outcome, purpose. The trouble with Dead by Daylight's uncertainty and random factors is it becomes difficult to measure the effectiveness of some perks. The best example of this is Dead Hard versus other exhaustion perks like Balance Landing. When injured, Dead Hard will always be able to extend a loop. It will always buy a survivor enough distance to get to that pallet or vault, extending that loop and giving the other teammates time to complete the next generator. Whereas Balance Landing relies on falling from a great height, and not every realm features reliable spots to fall from, and some have none. This is why you are far more likely to see a survivor using Dead Hard than Balanced Landing. With a 40 second cooldown, it is by far the best and most reliable perk in the game when used optimally, which is just to get distance. The worst bit, there's not really any reason not to take Dead Hard or other meta perks like Decisive Strike. The game somewhat has a Nash equilibrium, meaning a set of strategies, one for each player, such that no player has incentive to change his or her strategy given what the other player is doing. Matt Spriggans, design director for Dead by Daylight, even stated how players have little motivation to explore different perk loadouts. This can naturally lead to a feeling of gameplay becoming stale. Regardless of the killer perks here, Dead Hard and Decisive Strike are useful tools and are often present in every match, if not on every survivor. Behaviour have now commented on the lack of variety emerging in the game and plan to adjust many of these meta perks, Dead Hard among them, they want to bring back variety, but does the idea of MMR support this? I think many would agree that MMR has reinforced the meta playstyles. Games which feature MMR like Overwatch, League of Legends and Street Fighter tend to be competitive, featuring ranked modes and a great deal of symmetry in their design, where the players themselves are what add uncertainty. Dead by Daylight lacks symmetry. Both sides have different abilities, objectives and even different numbers of players. The level design revolves around uncertainty and random factors, making winning and losing very much based on luck of the draw sometimes. Not to say MMR is all bad, it does prevent new players from being matched with long time users. Which is good, because we want more people to play Dead by Daylight, 
we don't want them being chased off by sweaty nurse mains. But I suggest there is a better way to do this. Games in the past have protected new users for a limited time, matching them with other new users, allowing them to learn the basics. I would then slowly integrate these players with lower MMR users. There's no point totally throwing away MMR, but at a certain point everyone is thrown back together into the matchmaking of old. Match killers and survivors with others based on their grades. I'm an agent of chaos. <laughs> oh, and you know the thing about chaos. It's fear. This would protect new players and lean Dead by Daylight back towards its casual roots and away from the pseudo-competitive RNG it currently resides. Most importantly, it would bring back variety and maybe tone down the sweat for the invisible MMR number people seek to increase. Maybe learning a new killer will be trial by fire sometimes, but with AI bot matches coming to DBD, there will be a place to practice these killers elsewhere. I don't think MMR was totally wrong to implement, but Dead by Daylight's asymmetrical design makes fairness very difficult. And for me, it's the MMR based win conditions which really highlight the lack of fairness within the game. And it also encourages players to use somewhat unfair playstyles to win. Everything else is pretty well balanced, if you see the game as casual with a variety of experiences to be had. Anyway, I really want to know what your thoughts are. What do you think? Do you think DBD should lean towards competitiveness with MMR? Or do you think its design is counter to this? Thank you for watching everyone, and if you want to see more content like this, you can subscribe and smash that like button. <laughs> have, have an awesome day everyone.